Hey, good morning, YouTubers and RV fans. This is Kit, and she's eating her breakfast. She's been such a good girl. Are you a good girl, Kit? We just got back from our walk. And one of the things that I wanted to do is show you how absolutely beautiful the Alabama sky is. I'm going to take you out here so you can see it. Because it is rather amazing and I was thinking about this as I was walking over the last few days the Alabama sky is so big and so beautiful look at that look at that absolutely breathtaking you know I lived in Florida for three years and before that I lived in Florida for a long time but I don't know that I ever saw the sky look as big and beautiful as it does here in Alabama, lower Alabama anyway. It's going to be a beautiful day today. It's going to be about 78 degrees and clear skies, no rain. And so it's going to be a great day. So I want to go ahead and put up my canopy and then I'll sit down and chat with you for a moment. This is how the canopy looks out. It's all wet, so, but it's very nice. It's nice to have the canopy out. Kind of makes it feel like you're out enjoying yourself, camping. Even though you're in an RV park, it's just really nice to have the canopy out. It's a pretty canopy, it does the job, and I'm very happy with it. I need to get up there I need to clean off the edges as you can see I have a little tree growing up there which is not good because that's gonna get into the seals I need to get that out of there so as soon as I get a ladder I will be up there and I want to clean the rig itself too because it needs it girl needs to be cleaned all right I'll be back in a moment Okay, so I wanted to put out a video today um, because I want to talk with you about what's going on and how things are. But first, I want to give a shout out to RV Daydream. Um, I subscribed to RV Daydream some time ago. And uh, this is a guy who is a mechanic and uh, just does a great job um, with his, um, I think he's got a travel trailer. I believe it's a travel trailer. But uh, his videos are awesome and, um, you know, he does a nice job talking about the mechanics of, of RV life. And he put out a video yesterday about um, the things that, you know, avoiding RV mechanical failure. So if you haven't had a chance to watch it, watch it. I'll, I'll put the link down in the um, description because I can't do annotations. Sorry about that. But one of the things that he said, which I've always believed in, is that, you know, you should have a checklist of things that you check on your RV. Uh, especially if you're stationary because you want to make sure that everything's working good and that you know you don't have a disaster on the road and he went through his checklist and one of the things that really spoke to me was when you're parked for a long period of time the important part of starting up the rig and not just starting it up but taking it on a ride uh, taking it out and about and uh, sloshing those fluids around in the differential and in the transmission and getting the the tires heated up so that the uh, the, the grease and the bearings liquefy and, and spread around and lubricate everything you know one of the things he said is if you don't do that he said everything ends up in the pans you know because of gravity and the upper portions of uh, these mechanical uh, areas tend to get a little bit of moisture they can corrode and they can cause problems he also talked about checking your belts and when you need to do tune-ups and oil changes and those types of things so those are the things that I already knew and in fact did all those before I left on my trip here to Alabama um, and I'm probably about due to go back in and um, have those belts and um, hoses checked again. But all my belts and hoses checked out well. And of course, if you follow my channel, you know I've done the brakes and 
uh, put in some additional other repairs to the rig. So the rig's running great. Um, anytime I start it up, man, boom, it starts right up and, and goes. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and take the rig out for a, a ride. And in fact, uh, I talked to RV Debs and I said, you know, if you want to come along, you can because she said that she's never ridden in a motorhome before. So we're just going to take I-65 North and we're just going to head up and, you know, take take the rig out for a ride. That's not going to happen today. That'll probably happen tomorrow. So that'll be my next video. But I wanted to talk with you a little bit today about some of the things that have been going on in my mind because I really haven't done a video because I haven't really wanted to um, share with you about my schizophrenic thoughts. Um, but I've got a lot of things to say about RV life. And so I'll share those with you in just a moment. For all of you newbie RVers out there, I think the big thing is make sure that you're well prepared before you leave your sticks and bricks house. When I talk about being well prepared, there's a few things that I think you really need to address. Obviously, number one, and probably the most important, is the um, mechanical aspects of your of your um, RV. Now, if you have a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, then obviously you need to make sure that the tow your tow vehicle is mechanically sound, has good tires, and then of course the travel trailer, the fifth wheel itself, needs to be in good shape as well and roadworthy. Um, you know, take the time to bring the rig in, get your rig inspected, um, do all the safety checks. Um, I did that, which was really very positive. So it gave me some peace of mind that my rig was not only roadworthy, but there were things that I needed to do to it to make it even more roadworthy. Um, check your tire dates. I think your tire dates are hugely important. And also check your tire pressures. Um, I did that before I left on my trip here to Alabama, and my tire pressures were great. My tire dates are late. 2011, which means that my tires are going to age out probably next year. Um, the previous owner, um, Tom, who I've referenced in my blog when I wrote a letter to Tom, um, he put a full set of tires on the rig, brand new from Goodyear, and they're really in great shape. There's no wear and tear, there's no decor, um, I, I shouldn't say decor, but there's no, uh, let's see, there's no deterioration that I can determine. Um, the tires are holding pressures beautifully. In fact, I haven't had to put any air in them at all. Um, so they're really in good shape. I think the other thing that's important too is that if there's something that's not complete before you leave, make sure that you're going to be able to complete it when you're on the road. Case in point, for me, was my toad. Um, I gave my car to my son and um, he took the, the car to Asheville, North Carolina, where he lives. And I came to Lower Alabama just driving the rig. When I got here, um, RV Debs was gracious to take me to the grocery store uh, when I needed to go out. Um, she took me out when she went out, which was very nice, and I, I still am so appreciative of her doing that for me. But I also realized that without a vehicle, I was in no way free or independent to come and go and explore this beautiful area on my own. So I asked my son to bring my car back, and so he did. And now I have the car, and I'm here in Lower Alabama, and my, con my teaching contracts are done, and I have a week off. Totally thrilled that I have a week off, which is very wonderful, and I'm going to go ahead and explore that. But here lies my issue and my dilemma. My car is a 2014 Chevy Cruze diesel turbo, and it cannot be flat towed. I have to have a dolly. That's issue number one. Dollies cost rated right about used, probably about 12, 13, 1400 bucks. I can get one cheaper, but it's going to require some additional repairs and it's going to end up costing me, you know, at least $1,000 anyway. So therein lies the issue number one. Number two, my backup camera works sporadically. You know, um, it works when it wants to. So clearly there's a short in the circuitry, which I need to fix. I'm not an electrician. I'm not a mechanic. So these are challenges to me. Now, my question was, should I have left Florida in my sticks and bricks house without having a tow dolly and without having a backup camera. The reality of it is, is that it all's worked out fine. But in order for me to be more mobile, I have to have a dolly and a backup camera. And I have to gain some driving experience with a toad. Now I see rigs coming in and out of this park every day. Um, 43 foot diesel pushers with uh, you know a, a big, huge Ford 350 on the back of them. Um, the other day we saw a provost driving down the road with um, a Cadillac Escalade. Absolutely stunning, absolutely stunning rig. Um, 
And I wonder, you know, do the people who drive these rigs have experience? Do they, were they truck drivers before? So this is not a big deal for them. For me, it's all a big deal. Um, I, I'm really trying to gain a lot more confidence in driving my rig and not be so freaked out about being on the road and then more so being on the road with a toad. So these are issues that I have to deal with. I've talked on my Facebook page about changing it up and getting a fifth wheel and a um, F-250 to pull it. I've talked about getting a travel trailer when in reality, I just need to stick with what I've got. I need to be satisfied and happy with Myrtle and with moving her forward because she's been an outstanding rig. I have had no problems with her at all. So it's just my own insecurities and my own lack of confidence. So I don't know how you gain confidence unless you actually drive. You just have to drive. And you have to drive with your toad. You have to navigate and maneuver in the crazy spaces. You know, I watched Chris and, Chris and G. Uh, I watched Chris put on uh, his um, his toad. Actually, it's G's car. But I watched him retrofit the, the tow mounting. And, and then I watched the videos of when he first started towing and how anxious and nervous he was. And it made me feel better to know that I'm not the only one in this situation. That even a guy like who's gone back and forth to Alaska in a, in a class A still has the same intrepidation or the same anxious nerves about driving with a toad, especially when he's never towed anything either. So that gives me a feeling of um, maybe it's not as bad as, as I think it's going to be. I think the thing you have to do when you're driving a to with a toad is you have to pre-plan your route. I think you have to stop at the bigger um, gas stations like the travel, um, the travel gas stations and the, and the um, pilots and the Flying J's. Uh, they're probably a lot more friendly than getting yourself stuck in a, uh, a smaller um, gas station, which would be a huge problem for me. Now, where my plans rest is in the idea that I need to get this going. I need to get the dolly and I need to get the backup camera working perfectly so that I can leave. So, but fortunately, I have a lot of different choices. I can stay here in Lower Alabama, and I can work in Florida, which is not that far away from me. Um, it's about 15 miles uh, east on I-10. And so it's not really a big deal. I can get a job there, and I can work and make some extra money. Uh, or I can take a full-time position online. And, um, you know, my big issue is getting health insurance. Um, I do not have health insurance right now. It's really important that I get health insurance. And so that becomes a huge issue for me because I'm not a person that goes without health insurance. So in order to do that, I can get it through .gov or I can get it through an employer. Well, if I get it through an employer, I can, to, in order to continue my mobile lifestyle, I would need to be uh, working online 100%, totally. So be totally employed by an online organization where I can get full benefits and health insurance. If I choose to not do that, then I can take a position you know, within my locale, uh, with, within a communable locale, and secure health insurance through an employer that way. But then that reduces my ability to be mobile. Um, so, you know, these are some of the considerations that I have right now. And for those of you who've been following my channel, um, I haven't really talked much about them, but I need you to know that that's where I'm at. Um, I'm, I'm truly enjoying Lower Alabama, I have to tell you. It's a beautiful place. The people are incredibly friendly. There's lots of wonderful things to see and explore. Um, Debs and I have gone out many times um, to do a lot of different things, and it's been great. I, I really haven't, haven't not enjoyed it. I've, I've enjoyed it a great deal. Um, but I think there's a part of me that's ready to move on. You know, the summer's coming. I'd love to get north and see my kids and hang out, you know, in Asheville, North Carolina for the summer. And then after that, come down south and um, spend a little bit more time maybe down here in Lower Alabama, or even go over to Louisiana and hang out, you know, with my mom uh, for, this, for the winter. Um, whatever it is that I do, I want to be able to be more mobile and more flexible and have more confidence in driving this big, massive rig. And that day will come. So thank you so much for standing there with me, for your incredibly encouraging comments. Um, you'll never know really how much it means to have this many subscribers and this many people following your journey, paying attention to what you're going through emotionally and physically and everything else. And um, so thank you. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate your support and your
positive comments. I know I'm going to get this. It's going to it's going to be okay. But for you new PRBers out there, don't think it's just going to come naturally. You got to work at it. You got to practice it. And if you're truly committed to this lifestyle, then you will make it work one way or the other. All right. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, folks. Like the video, thumbs up if you like the video, share it. Um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed and thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.